Hello and welcome to another episode of Street View. We all enjoy the day-to-day -day photography we do on the streets, documenting what we see and what we encounter on our photo walks. And as fulfilling as this is, we should also be encouraging ourselves to look beyond the immediate and more obvious types of street pictures and start to look at how we might be able to tell stories with them. In this video, I want to explore the ways we can use our cameras for visual storytelling and how we can try to take pictures that tell us a little more about the people we see in our towns and cities and how we can do this within the realms of our everyday photo walks. A few years ago, I collaborated on a book project called London Lives, 24 Iconic People and Places Around the Clock. It featured one person and one place for each hour of the day, documenting the lives of ordinary Londoners and telling the story of England's capital city from both a well-known and less well-known perspective. Whilst I relished the opportunity to photograph some of London's fascinating places, overall it was a challenge for me as I had limited experience with formal portraiture and knew that as well as mostly using only available light, I would only have a brief time with each subject in which to convey both their personality and professional role. Nevertheless, I think it turned out quite well and I like the way the book links the city's people and places together by its use of the time of day which shows how the city continues to function right around the clock. The reason for talking about this project is that it serves as an illustration of how we can combine our love of picture taking with the power of storytelling through people's lives. I'm going to look at a few examples where I looked at the idea of pairing or combining images to tell a story or to suggest a link between things. I think combining images is a great way to build a narrative and you don't have to create a large body of work in order to do this. The viewer will quickly see the connection between the images and recognise the theme being suggested. While the start of the pictures will of course vary to some degree, I think the closer they are in looks, the stronger the effect. Your own style will naturally dictate the overall look, but a similarity in perhaps the composition or viewpoint will help to create something of a bond between them. I've found that time of day can also play a big part in connecting people and places. Prior to the London Lies project I spoke about, I did a series about London at night between the hours of 6pm and 6am. The intention was to follow the city through the early evening as people left their day jobs and went home or went out to socialise. And then look at the night workers and late night establishments as they continued to make the city tick through the early hours until morning when it would all start up again. I chose winter for the project as the nights are darker earlier and I wanted the darkness to act as a definite marker between night and day. With night photography, it's much easier to isolate people and place the focus more on their presence in the frame. This picture was taken at about seven o'clock on a weekday evening in the city of London. By that time, many of the office workers have departed and the place becomes very different with a special kind of quiet descending on it. Framed by the surround of the dark facade, I wasn't interested in the building's detail and only wanted the roughness of the road outside to provide a little contrast to the blandness of the interior. It's a very simple picture, nothing special about the exposure, the lens was wide open and the interior light was perfect. I like the symmetry with the only thing disrupting it being the cleaner herself and the wet trails of her mop. When looking at the image some days later, I thought that it was fine on its own. It does tell us something about a person in the place. But how could I take it further and find another image that I could pair with it that would not only strengthen it, but perhaps would begin to create a story? On my next night photo walk, I got to thinking about office windows again. And I wondered if I could somehow pair the cleaner in our first image with another with a similar structure, but with a difference in contrast as regards the subject matter. And I found this scene. The first thing I liked was obviously the relaxed post-work pose of the man. Settled back in his seat, legs crossed with foot nonchalantly resting on the table, the cares of the day dispensed with. 
it strikes an immediate contrast with the woman in the previous shot, right down to his almost horizontal posture when compared with the fixed upright pose of the woman cleaning. Also, if we look at his environment, the foyer area is adorned with a decorative plant, comfortable looking furniture and an air of repose. For the record, I'm in no way casting judgement here on either of these characters. I'm merely interested in the contrasting roles they seem to play. Neither is better or worse than the other, and they may be of equal importance. What interests me as a photographer is their contrasting visual appearances. And sometimes that's all we can do as street photographers. It is perhaps for the viewer to look further into our pictures and decide for themselves what they are looking at and what they feel. I think this is what story creation is all about with all forms of media, to provide thinking and talking points. I think the same idea works with these pictures of city workers, those that work in the offices and those that work in the kitchens. As I've said, exhibiting our pictures in groups or pairs is a great way for us to showcase our work. Of course, two pictures don't have to be from the same type of setting or time of day. Here, I was interested in the quiet conversation between these two nuns as they came out of the church. And I like the comparison of this picture of a quiet conversation between these two in a very different setting. And here is something completely different with the dramatic use of red in this part of the washroom, paired with a different kind of red in this part of the washroom. We can see the effectiveness of this in books as two pictures sit side by side, specially chosen to complement each other and reinforce the message. We can also do this using social media platforms such as Instagram and Twitter. I've been using Instagram for a while, as I'm sure many of you have, and quite like it, although it seems to be changing somewhat at the moment. Still, it's useful for building a portfolio and you can group images together in a sort of slideshow. Twitter is new to me, but I quite like the way it's possible to combine images that can be viewed simultaneously in one post, providing viewers the opportunity to see them displayed as intended. Thinking in themes and narratives is a definite step in the direction towards broadening our horizons as photographers as it makes us think more creatively about the picture taking process and how we can combine images to create stronger portfolios that have more to say. And that's an exciting prospect. Thank you to everyone that subscribed, liked and commented on the channel. It's really appreciated. Thanks to everyone for their continuing support. See you next time. If you're interested in seeing more of the London Lies project, you can find a link to the book in the description to the video below. To see more of my work, visit my website at www.rupertvandervelle.co.uk and check out my book, Fine Art Street Photography, available at Amazon.